Hello class, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi. It depends on where uh, you are joining the program. Uh, we'll come back to uh, Big Bang Data Science Solution, the Ramadan program or the free program, uh, which is 10 week uh, program. So uh, now we are, uh, I believe in week number five. So in week number one, uh, we talked about the, uh, the importance uh, we talked about data science and analytics. So then we learned about the um, Jupyter Notebook. Then uh, in week number two, uh, we learned about the first phase of the CRISP DM, that is business understanding. Then in week three, we learned about data understanding. In week four, uh, we learned about data preparation, uh, data visualization in general. And we are still gonna do uh, uh, we are still going to do uh, data preparation. We have not done it, done it yet. So we are going to have an extra um, session on uh, learning how to prepare pre-processed data. And of course, once we have the data, then we are going to learn how uh, to build machine learning, uh, both, um, you know, supervised uh, machine learning, decision tree, logistic regression, support vector machine, and ensemble method, and... Uh, of course, we are going to have a, a final project for all of you guys. So that is the plan. Um, in the uh, last time, what we did, uh, number one, um, we are still working for, for the bank problem. We got some information on the bank problem. Uh, so these are uh, the um, data dictionary or metadata. So we were able to import packages. We were able to uh, read the data. Then um, we uh, apply some uh, rudimentary cleaning uh, by simply looking into the variables uh, and replacing any space, any special character, any uppercase to lowercase and underscore. Then we looked into uh, the head function, the tail function. Then we uh, transformed, uh, we uh, replaced or renamed our target variable from Y to term deposit. Then we changed the value of the term deposit uh, from uh, yes, no to zero and one. And of course we learned about the info function then we learned about the uh, describe function. Uh, we learned about the transpose uh, function. And we learned about the statistic analysis um, for uh, categorical data versus uh, numerical data. Then we transformed the value of the target variable from zero and one to yes and uh, to zero, so from yes, no to zero and one. Then we visualize the target variable. And now we are ready to go. Then we moved into data visualization. Uh, we learned about the uh, histogram, which is used uh, to visualize the continuous uh, values. Uh, then we learned about the uh, density plot. We work similar to histograms. Then we learned about the uh, bar plot which is used uh, to uh, visualize the categorical data and um, compare the levels of the categorical data. After that, we uh, moved into uh, uh, multicollinearity and correlation analysis. So we use the correlation analysis to reduce the dimensionality of the data by simply eliminating features that have minimum impact to the target variable and we uh, reduce the dimensionality of the data also uh, by eliminating features that are highly correlated to one another. Then we learned how to use uh, the heat map to visualize the correlation analysis. And we did the scar plot um, to visualize the relationship between two independent uh, variables. So the correlation between duration and the age, we got an outlier in there. And um, so 
uh, it's scattered there is no direction and uh, today before we move uh, into the topic uh, of today uh, session which is data preparation i was yeah i'd love to introduce two great packages one of them is called a profile report and one of them is is called the uh, uh, sweet fees sweet fees and profile report so what these uh, two uh, packages do uh, actually is simply uh, they are uh, creating a dynamic uh, dynamic uh, visualization of your data so i'm going to import from pandas profiling i'm going to import profile report and you didn't have this code yet uh, i'm going to share them later but this is something added to the program so imported the uh, profiling report then now i'm going to sit i'm going to sit uh, create an object and i'm going to assign this profile report to my data very simple and uh, let's take a look into the profile so it's building a profile and i'm going to stop recording so we imported we imported the uh, the, the method so this is called the method from this package pandas uh, profiling so number two we created an object it could be any name and we use the method we use the method here a method is a function it has a parenthesis and we pass into it our data that's it you know and of course we added the title you don't have to do this this is the most important is adding your data to the method that you just um, imported run it and print the report so now we have the report so what do we have here uh, we got um, 21 variables we got 41,188 uh, number of observations. Missing values, we got 0%, uh, zero, missing sets 0%. Duplicate uh, rows, we got rows, we got 12. Duplicate uh, percentage 0 0.1. Total size is 21 point uh, megabyte. And now uh, we got 10 variables uh, that are numeric and 10, 11 variables that are categorical. So this has to be transformed later. And now um, you have a nice uh, summary of each variable. So the variable age, uh, the mean is 40, is 40 uh, minimum uh, is 17, maximum is 98. So this is the distribution, the missing values is zero, etc. So you are gonna get a lot of statistical analysis uh, per uh, each and every variable. So uh, for this variable, you want to look into statistics. Here we go. You want the histogram or to visualize it. Uh, you want to look into the common values, uh, extreme values means outliers. So, so you got, you got um, statistical analysis, you got the data visualization, you got the, uh, the uh, quality review, quality report for uh, particular, um, every particular um, variable. So that is the age. Now the job again, you could apply it. Uh, the job is a, is a numeric. So we got 12 distinct, um, I'm sorry, the job is categorical. You got 12 distinct um, job levels. And there is no missing values. Uh, the admin out of 41,000, we get 10,442, uh, a bro broker law, um, 9,000, uh, technician, 6,000, services, 3,000, management, etc. Let's take a look into uh, uh, their uh, uh, statistical analysis. So this is the overview, the frequency, the categories. Uh, so we got here the um, bar plot, the words. So a lot of uh, frequencies, the count, etc. Uh, characters, these are the, are, uh, some of the uh, probably uh, most used um, characters in these uh, uh, job names. So yes, the, this, this, that is what this uh, quality report does. This, uh, this uh, profiling report, very simple, but 
uh, it's you know it does not require any coding as actually it's simply two lines import implement print import implement print and now you got the nice uh, you know report on all the variables uh, the report th this report will help you understand uh, make sense of the values before you proceed with your analysis that is what this profile and um, pandas profiling report does so is this very similar to um, like a Java profiler where I know what is my footprint of the... I have no my... idea of Java. I'm not a Java person. I'm, uh, okay. If anyone here is a Java person, Java expert, please. So uh, the, question, the question was really um, the purpose of uh, the running a profile, right, is to figure out the, the memory usage or no. is that just uh, no. looking at the variable? It's, it's understanding the values. Of values okay understanding making sense making statistical sense of your values so uh, this is a uh, java profile is totally different this is uh, like uh, we are uh, analyzing the data not the memory usage of the machine stuff correct, correct. correct. and also look at this you know it gives you correlation analysis so everything that we covered from day one correlation analysis everything that we covered manually here using some codes struggling with it one click three lines with the uh, profile report will give you the same so it does provide you the information in the variables uh, if they are um, you know, categorical versus numeric it gives you their distribution uh, the uh, the count the frequency interaction it gives you a uh, correlation analysis here we go this is the same uh, correlation that we uh, that we we covered Actually, it gave you a Pearson, Pearson Man, Kendall, a fourth one. So there's a lot of um, correlation um, techniques in there, missing values, you know, sampling. Um, it's, it's really great, uh, great uh, report that you need to be familiar with uh, to uh, speed up your the process of uh, uh, understanding your data. Really, it's a great, it's a great report. With three lines, you know, three lines. You, you really don't have to be uh, to be a, a programmer to apply the three lines. So import, import the the, the method from the package. Uh, initiate the method by simply passing the whatever variable you are trying to uh, you know, the object or the data that you're trying to build up the, the the report print that's it and you got everything that we covered from day one all the way to today is covered you know can be done with three lines that is the beauty of data science you know some of these algorithms some of the methods and uh, packages do great job in helping us understanding or uh, compl uh you know, completing the task yeah and hello Mo. please i want to ask um, when you instantiate um, new profile reports. So, how do you exactly know the parameters to pass? Will there be an intelligence to show the data, the title? So, uh, so I mean, uh, for, I mean, you're talking about the, the data or the parameters? I'm talking about the parameters to pass. So, um, good question. The one things that I would do is simply go through the uh, go through uh, the um, documentation. Let's take a look. Uh, pandas and do a profiling pandas a PDF so it might be a, it might be a, yeah maybe a lot of articles in there that talks about that body it. Uh, it might it might be a documentation or what you could do uh, what you could do is simply uh, do uh, con shift control shift tab you are going to get um, this nice um, table that comes with it. Oh, perfect. Perfect. It gives you, uh, you know, but start Good. with documentation first. You know, this is not a uh, detail, but you could do uh, uh, this is the diff or the data frame, which is simply your data, minimal, no. uh, explorative, you know, sensitive. Explorative. Mode. Mm -hmm. you data type Boolean. Yeah. So these are the, the, the uh, given or the uh, the available parameters to pass. Okay, oh. 
So to do it, thank you so much. Using the, you are welcome using the, the keyboard. Simply put the cursor at the end of the uh, in here at the end of the uh, the method and do shift tab twice. Shift tab twice. And you could also print it uh, print it in the. Uh, you could do help uh, or a question mark. You could get uh, this nice uh, you know document. But do the comment do the documentation also. Um, try to Google the the uh, um, you know the PDF uh, that would probably come with a lot of uh, information, a uh, lot of detailed information on how to utilize uh, the maximize uh, the benefit of using uh, profile reporting. But do you guys do you guys see see the value that, you know as far as the time consuming the time and the the uh, the output. It's way better, uh, you know, time consuming. This, this is very less time and the output is great compared with building a model from, um, you know, uh, designing uh, uh, what you call the data pre-processing or data understanding from scratch. But again, uh, this is not going to make you uh, knowing the, uh, the pandas um, uh, profile report is not going to make you that. Uh, now, knowing this uh, pandas, th this method only, is not going to make you a data scientist. So, but this is an ad, something that you might need to rely on uh, once you are familiar with the process of uh, knowing how to uh, make sense of your data. It's something that you need to add. Another package that this is more a dynamic package. It's called uh, SweetVis. So, uh, SweetVis again. Uh, you need to import the package. Let's try this. Um, you need to import the package, and uh, yeah. Before we do that, let's let's take a look into uh, documentation to see if we have any sweet sweets versus. Uh, here we go. Yeah, it's gonna create. A, it's gonna create a report like this. It's a dynamic report. So you, you are going to see something like this for all your data. It's dynamic. You see um, statistic analysis of your uh, features. Uh, you see uh, data visualization, especially the, uh, the distribution, the bar plot, and um, histograms of your features. Yeah, let me see if I can, if I can get you. Uh, here we go. So we got this. Uh, no, this is not what I was looking for. I'm looking for the document suite. Yeah, here we go. So this is the package. Uh, this is the uh, the uh, the page. I'm going to share it with you guys. With uh, you know, and the chat. Please go ahead and um, utilize it, learn it, uh, try it. You know, try it. So these are um, two packages. Probably um, will help you a lot in determining. Uh, in helping you understanding the value of your data correctly. So let's try, uh, you know, we are going to import, uh, yeah, we are going to import, uh, import. Uh, uh, number one, you need to install, we need to install it. I believe it's, uh, you, you need to use the uh, uh, exclamation mark, pip install, then uh, sweet this and run it. Let me see if this is the, Yes, yeah, this is the uh, uh, the function or the the code to install the package. So mine is already satisfied. So I'm going to uncomment this line because it's already been installed. And I'm going to uh, import. So we are going to import the sweet Vs and give an alias as CV. Now we want to build a... Uh, and analyze, we want to analyze the our data, which is bank apps, and we want the output to be in the HTML report. That's it, run this, and uh, you are gonna see uh, an output in a different, um, uh, in HTML format. Now, uh, so uh, this is our code, and when we run this, it does create, a, uh, uh, an HTML report. So here we go. So you click. Um, so this is age. 
and you see here we got uh, we got uh, you know um, some um, statistical information uh, we got the distribution uh, most frequent values and this is all this is only um, an age on a job we get uh, categorical data category uh, no, bar plus for categorical data we got um, some um, no frequency etc and uh, so this report comes um, you know this uh, library uh, comes with a lot of um, parameters you know you can play around it no so anyway yeah uh, please go ahead and uh, try it and uh, these two uh, extra packages will definitely help you uh, make uh, make a real sense of your data understand your data as you should and also it will help you determine the values that should be eliminated and the values that should be should be included and finally we are gonna save uh, the file yeah we are gonna save um, the new file uh, under a different name so now we are done we are done with uh, making sense with understanding data in terms of uh, applying some statistical analysis and also doing some data visualization so the next step of the process is uh, we want to the next step of the process is we are going to need to read the data one more time and we want to uh, try to eliminate uh, or transform the data and from categorical to numeric so uh, bank um, or the bank uh, app version 2 is simply a bank uh, it's the original data but we uh, eliminated some features based on their importance to the target variable so if we as as we mentioned um, in some of the earlier uh, uh, in our session the process of elimination okay so uh, we got uh, now this is the process of um, eliminating uh, features would it be faster to get it from the youtube video like you already have designed it there and you know just go to that okay so uh, version two is simply a version one um, excluding some of the features that we eliminated uh, we learned how to eliminate feature using uh, prior knowledge uh, <clears throat> any feature that is a uh, number one uh, no any ids number two uh, any uh, <clears throat> uh, information in a, in a personal uh, info number three any constant uh, features should be eliminated using a uh, prior uh, prior knowledge then we learned how to use correlation analysis and this is how we come up with uh, in our version number two in version number two uh, we still have some features here that should be eliminated yeah anyway so uh, but uh now we have uh, version number two and what do we have here we got a um, lot of categorical data so definitely we need to find a better transformation for um, categorical data yeah so this is all categorical data no you got this okay so why do we need uh, to transform categorical data into numeric is simply most of the algorithms um, that we are going to learn in the future uh, they are uh, you know they are designed around uh, numerical data uh, and regardless an algorithm is simply a mathematical uh, function 
that deals with uh, values. So it's better that we feed values uh, or numeric values rather than categorical values. So uh, we are going to read. We are going to read the data one more time into. Uh, so we are we are going to start um, file number two. Okay. So let me uh, first uh, clear out the output. So we can start first. So as usual, we are going to import the packages. Now, Pine for numerical Python, Matplotlib for data visualization, Pandas for data analytics and manipulation, Seaborn uh, is uh, for data visualization. Then we are going to set uh, the max column to max. Then we are going to import uh, bank app underscore v2. And uh, in terms of Again, you know, when we uh, imported, uh, when we transformed the uh, the date, the um, ABT into features, uh, we of course started with the raw data. As I said, raw data it could be uh, all the data you are looking for. It could be a um, uh, data with a lot of um, deficiencies, a lot of quality problems. Of course, this data here is not uh, ready to go for modeling. Uh, otherwise, you are going to get uh, into a uh, uh, guy go with simply uh, garbage in, garbage out. So we want to uh, understand the, 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 the raw data first, applying uh, data manipulation, uh, exploratory data analysis, data visualization, and statistical analysis. That is, that is uh, very important. And um, we could use the um, PANDAS profiling report, uh, sweet Vs, um, that could help us to design the code book. And we are going to use this code book here to uh, determine the optimal method for data preprocessing. At the end, we are going to have versions, uh, better versions of the data, better than the raw data. And these versions, of course, it is going to definitely reduce the GIGO, um, uh, you know, things, um, at least to the minimum. So now we got uh, version number two. Of the data and in version number two is simply the original data excluding few of the features that we already uh, know we should be eliminate them using our prior knowledge and also using uh, the correlation analysis so let's take a look into the data and uh, yeah let's take a look into the data here so uh, we got when we when we uh, uh, when we uh, saved the file the, the, from the uh, when we saved the file and the version two from the first um, uh, you know Jupyter notebook, it does create a, uh, an index which we need to um, eliminate. So we got a nine uh, and name zero, and I believe uh, if we, I believe there is a technique. Let me see. Close this. I'm going to run it. Okay, and now I'm going to open the the file again. Yes, yeah, that is the yeah, that is the yeah, that that's it. You know, you don't have to. Um, no, but if, if for a reason you forgot to set the index in. It is going to cre create some indexing for you. And all I have to do is uh, read your data one more time and drop it. So I'm going to read the data one more time. And of course, I don't have to do this. Great. OK, so uh, now what we have to do uh, is we are going to look into the missing values. And uh, for the missing values, uh, by the way, uh, when we are talking about missing, missing values could uh, uh, could be a serious problem talking about missing values it's not only an empty cells you now where you got uh, a null so missing values it could be um, a zero in there it could be a minus one it could be a negative value it could be um, uh, multiple digits like 999 it could be um, a character uh, like for numbers, it could be zero, 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 zero. 
So when we when we are looking for missing values, don't only look for uh, uh, null cells or empty cells. Uh, as I said, because um, some of the missing values might not be represented in terms of um, uh, nothing or a null value. And one one way uh, to uh, help you determine missing values in terms of um, different uh, values is simply applying the uh, describe function. So describe function and look into the, the values that don't make sense. So if we were to do here, uh, and see if we can uh, uh, see some values in there that if you have any zeros, uh, so any zeros, anything that is strange, uh, probably that does not make sense, uh, then you might need to uh, co reconsider, consider revisiting them or uh, bring in the, 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 your uh, doubt about them to the management or to the, uh, the, your data expert. So uh, missing values, as I said, it could be a, an empty value, a null, an empty cell, or it could be something else. So to determine the missing values, uh, looking for the empty cell, we are going to use is any. Is any will uh, return a boolean. False, 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 true, true, true means if there is a missing value, you are going to see a true. If uh, there is um, there is no missing values, you are going to see a false. But this is too much to, to consume too much information. So we are going to add um, a function called sum. It, uh, just sum them up, and that is going to sum the value, the number of uh, you know the the number of uh, false and the number of uh, uh, true. Um, uh, you know, in our records. So as you see here, uh, age, we got zero. Job, we got zero. Mart uh, zero, everything is zero. And we already have this information uh, from the uh, the profiling report. We already have uh, missing sales is zero. We already, so this is a missing sales. It does not, um, does not capture uh, other missing values. If there is a missing values, Sorry, uh, missing values. Okay, if uh, there is a missing values that there is not a, that, you know, an empty cell, uh, definitely uh, it won't capture it. It would it wouldn't find it. Okay, so when we are talking about missing values, there are three type of missing values. Here are uh, MCAR, MNR, and um, yeah, MCAR, uh, MAR, and MNR. So again, when we are talking about missing values, please um, pay attention to the other type of missing values. And missing values, it could be uh, it could be um, a type point there. I'm sorry, it could be uh, uh, because the information were not collected collected the right. It could be it, there are so many uh, so many things that would could con contribute to a missing values. And uh, as I said, look into uh, other type of missing values. It could be a zero there means a missing value. It could be a negative. It could be an empty cell. But the most common ones and the most methods that uh, and the automated methods um, simply handles the empty cells and uh, the null cells rather than. Um, a cell that has a value. So look for those values that would uh, simply represent the missing values. So there are three types of missing values. Um, MCAR or missing completely at random. So the MCAR is really hard to determine uh, the value. So if, uh, if we have in our data set here, uh, let's say that you know, we have um, this value missing. It's really hard to determine the value. It's going to be very hard to determine the value of um, this missing value. Very hard. So we have to uh, find a better approach uh, to um, approximate 
uh, the, the value. We are we probably might not get the right value, but we are going to approximate it. Come, you know, get a value that closer to it. So that is called um, MCAR. The uh, other type of missing values is uh, MAR uh, is missing at random. So uh, so uh, so MAR occurs when the missingness is not random but where the missingness can be fully accounted by a variable where there's a complete information. Like for example, um, let's say that uh, uh, you have in, in the data set, you have the state, state, states, and you get here and uh, cities. And you get here, um, let's say uh, Tennessee, you get, uh, Georgia, Tennessee, you got uh, Georgia, you got um, uh, New York, you got, the, you got Texas, you got Florida, etc. And for the city, you got here Nashville, uh, Nashville, you got here, you know, Atlanta. and you got the missing values so for this one um, this is a type of uh, a type of uh, mar but it's uh, it's easy to determine the value it's easy to determine the value also another uh, good example is uh, imagine that uh, we started a survey you now i survey collecting information um, from you guys and I asked you uh, three or four questions. No, asked you uh, question number one. Now your uh, uh, full name and um, complete address. I hate this when it happens. They say that I ask about name and um, address. Number two, I asked about your marital status. Are you a single? Married, divorced, uh, widow, undecided, or something, something else. And number three, um, um, names, names of your kids. Okay. So, uh, if you are married and have kids, of course, you are going to answer this question. Otherwise, this question is going to be missing. So the, the, the missingness here is conditional, is a condition uh, to the uh, previous answers. That is a type of, uh, no, of uh, mar missing, uh, uh, you know, missing at random. The other one is missing not at random, is the opposite. And it's similar to it. Uh, let, let's say that, for example, I was doing a survey. I asked you again for your name, your marital status, um, and I asked you uh, about your income. Your income number. Or I and I asked you about your how many um, you no know, dose um, of drug you used last week. Of course, uh, you know if if I was to do this publicly, uh, you would answer your uh, your name, uh, your marital status. I don't think you have we have the courage to answer the income, and so you are going to put a zero in there or n eight, n eight. So these are some of the type of the uh, uh, 
uh, of the uh, missing values that we have to handle uh, regardless. The question is uh, now, how do we uh, handle missing values? How do we deal with missing values? If you have a missing values, how to deal with them? So um, I need your um, a dialogue here. I need your help to see if we can uh, come up with a plan of how we uh, uh, can handle missing values. What do you think we should do to handle missing values? Everybody? Maybe drop those records. Yes, that is an option. Drop uh, records. But when? When, when, we... missing, when the data is missing, uh, like required data. I know, you know, drop uh, missing records. A drop missing records, it could be, uh, it could be uh, uh, a column, it could be a row, it could be um, an attribute, yeah, it could be so many things. But the question is when, when do we need to drop them? Uh, so my opinion is you can, uh, you can drop the records, but at the same time, you have to see the validity of the record for your report building. If that if that variable is important for creating the record or some sort of data, then you have to see that whether to whether to drop it or not. That is true, mom. Yes. How important? How important important the uh, missing value or the in, the entire column or rows is? How how important uh, the record is? To the target to the target variable in general yes that is a, that is one of the reason that uh, dropping missing records is not going to be an option so so, have, so, the, so how are we going to draw uh, draw the importance like on the basis of like if the value is missing is dependent on the other values or it's yeah, like totally that, that it could be of course also it could be uh, if you have too many missing values too many uh, missing values. Now, let me say that you have a small data set uh, with, uh, let's say, 500 records, and you get here 25 uh, columns. And you got 50% uh, of the records, they are missing values, or 80%. So if you want to drop them, you are dropping 80% of your 500. So you are going to end up only having twenty percent um, data set, which is going to, which is, uh, should be not enough to learn a pattern, to learn um, a model. So dropping is um, requires some conditions. If you have too many missing values, if the uh, if the uh, records um, using your prior knowledge, uh, using some correlation type of analysis require you know determines that the the value is very important of course we are not going to drop it so, in, so i think we, we, we can also look at the skewness yes yes it's risk go ahead okay so I think we can also look at the skewness of the um, probably the role of the record if there are too many um there is no definite pattern around the data and, uh, or maybe the extreme values skewed to one side or the other. That may also form a basis of uh, our decision on whether to drop the values or not. I mean, uh, the pattern. Skewness is in another, um, another direction or another quality uh, deficiencies that we are going to cover later. Yeah, but you can use it uh, if, if uh, you could use it if your data is very, very bad. Regardless, if you uh, you know if you were to keep it, it's still not uh, won't contribute to the predicting your target variable. I think you should eliminate it. But in in, in general, if you were to drop a you know, a record, just look how many report how many records of the similar that we have, and uh, how important um, for your analytics for your analysis in general then make a decision. If you have one records in the past, I worked for, um, in the project that I worked in, the, one of the projects that I worked in the past, I got 600,000 
uh, records and over probably 23,000 records they have missing values and the management decides to eliminate them. 23,000 out of 600,000 is nothing. But if you have 300,000 uh, records with missing values, that is another, another game to play. Okay, what else? Drop in, what else? Um, could we also take the mode or the mean of the what do we columns? Call the average? No. So I like get the estimate of the missing record if it's... What, what do we call that process? It has a name. Imputation. Yes, sir, imputation. Yeah, if, if imputation, um, if it's uh, numeric, we are going to do uh, impute with what uh, we could impute using the mean, median, and uh, distribution. And if it's uh, non numeric, if it's categorical, what do you think we should do? <laughs> Either use the most frequently occurring category or uh, build a model to yes, predict sir. the category. John, what do we call that? The most common category? Oh, is simply. Uh, yeah. Mode, mode of yeah. frequency. Mode. Yes. But when do we, uh, for the category call, uh, let's say that you have uh, something, uh, let, let's bring a scenario. And uh, in, in, in the project that, I, that I'm working with, uh, but let's take a look into that. So you got here, let's say that we have, uh, you know, we, we have a categorical field that is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, mar marital status. Okay, and we have here, yeah, yeah we have here, uh, so this is a single, this is a married, we have here a um, divorced, and we got here, question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got um, different, We got here, uh, this is married, this is divorced, this is single, and this is question mark. What do we think we should do? Now, if you were to do, if we were to do the mode, simply we are gonna take this uh, animal here, and add it to the top of of the most frequent, add it to the top of this one, which is gonna create some bias, right? So creating, you know, transforming uh, or imputation is not, is not uh, a best option. So imputation is a good option if you have a small, uh, you know, if you have a, uh, the missing value is very uh, is a small amount missing value something like this it wouldn't make any uh, difference it wouldn't make any difference so we could add this to the uh, most frequent and of course difference is going to be a uh, minimum but if you were if, if the uh, if the uh, missing values is is the most frequent uh, this is most uh, most frequent Of course, imputation is not going to be a, uh, it's not going to be a, you know, uh, the right option. So is there any way we can uh, consider dependency um, on the basis of importance? What do you mean? Like, are, have we already considered the dependency, how the missing value is dependent? 
to the other, uh, you know, um, other values to decide the importance. Yeah, we could do that from the from the the, the option number one, not option number two. Is that what you're talking okay. about? Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. No, I'm talking about imp 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 imputation. Imputation has nothing to do with uh, the importance. Hey, Mo, can you give us an example for numerical as well? Like you give us an example for the categorical, right? Uh, yeah, I will give you an example for that. Okay. So, um, what do we th what do we need to do in this case? Imputation only works if you have a small um, num number of missing of categorical, but when it's uh, when it's uh, the missing is the frequent uh, so we have here m for married d for um, divorce c uh, s for single or we could do this uh, uh, unknown simply or in name so if it's uh, if it's more frequent then we are going to keep it keep keep it and rename it I simply give it a name that would make sense to us rename it so now we are going to have, instead of having three uh, known uh, level of this categorical data, and we have a missing value, which is a, which is a zero or NA or a question mark, we could simply rename it unknown. So at the end of the day, will that not um, have an impact on our business interpretation? I mean, Adrian, I, I, barely, I barely hear you. Oh, oh, sorry. I said at the end of the day. So, um, will the data renamed as unnamed? Will it not have impact on um, our business interpretation? Yeah, it could, but uh, it's better. Uh, it's better than uh, adding this uh, unknown to uh, to the to the uh, you know uh, most frequent one. It's better. So, you know, statistically, it's better to have uh, you know a separate. Uh, categorical um, level of this categorical data rather than adding it to the most frequent. So this is going to be, if we were to add this question mark bar into the S, is going to be, this is going to be very high. So it's going to be, we're creating probably an, uh, an outlier. So uh, imputation for categorical, uh, we could use mode or frequency. Uh, if uh, the uh, value of the missing values is, is very small, is minimal. Question concerns about the mode imputation before I clear out this. Okay, bye bye. I'm going to simply remove this. And uh, for uh, numeric, we say that we have. Um, And of course, uh, for numeric is, I mean, uh, it's going to be a histogram. So we have here something like this. Okay, so uh, we got some values in there and in here we got a missing value we got a zero in there so let's say this is a age this is age for example we got 37 we got 11 and now we got um, you know, 37 we got um, let's say um, 10 we got 20 and we got 17. So we could do the mean. We could do 37 plus 11 plus 37 plus uh, 10 plus 20 plus 17 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we are going to get a value in there. Uh, the median, then we are going to put this into a uh, an order, so it's going to be 10, 11, 10, 11, uh, 10, 11 um, 17, uh, 20, 
and 37. So the min is going to be around 17, something in here, you know, 17. As if we were to uh, replace this missing value with uh, uh, with uh, mean or median or the distribution. Okay. So what else? What else we could do uh, to uh, handle the missing values? Number three. Mo, Mo, just a quick question. Could you clarify what you mean by replace with distribution? Uh, the, uh, the variant. So the variance um, is, um, there is a, there's a formula behind it. Uh, find the variance and replace it with the variance. You mean standard deviation? Yes. Okay, so what else that you think we should do to handle missing values? So dropping records, imputation, what else? Is it part of is it is it part of our job to retrospect about data gathering? Uh, say again, Idris. Is it is, is it in line with part of our job to sit back and retrospect? Retrospect around data gathering. I did, not, is, um, I did not get the the last part of your question. But it is your responsibility to preprocess, clean, um, cleanse, prepare. You no, know, get get a better data. If you have a missing value in your data, of course, is going to deviate um, your uh, analysis uh, from the reality. So it is your responsibility to determine if you have a missing values and determine the best optimal, best method to handle it. And you only can apply one method. You don't have to apply drop-in and imputation. Just apply one. But uh, which one to, that you should try, it depends on um, the value of the variables that they, are, they have missing values. It depends on the um, percentage and it depends also on importance. Okay, we could also uh, predict the missing values uh, with machine learning. Okay, so we could do that. Let's say that uh, you have um, a small data set Yeah, a small data set in here. And you got here X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, uh, and you got the Y. And of course, you got here populated, populated, not populated. So we could split the data into two parts. And apart with uh, complete data, we are going to build a machine learning. And that, uh, of course, we are going to split later, but we are going to build a machine learning on a complete data set or complete uh, part of the data where there is no missing values. And whatever we learn, we are going to apply it on the uh, part of the data that has a missing values. So we could use a machine learning to predict the value of the missing values. And the most common method is called k nearest neighbor. k nearest neighbor. What else do you think we should do to uh, eliminate or to uh, handle uh, these missing values? Number five, we could, number four, we could apply uh, some uh, robust uh machine learning in other words non-probabilistic non-probabilistic and non-algebraic models um, like a decision tree which we are going to learn later random forest uh, bagging boosting or any model that uses decision tree as it's base learner, learner. It could be used 
uh, it could be used uh, to eliminate the uh, the missing values why is that because these are non-algebraic non-probabilistic models they really don't care uh, they really don't care about the value of uh, your uh, your data so uh, they handle you know decision tree and any decision tree family they handle categorical data that you don't have to transform your categorical to numeric they handle missing values you don't have to deal with missing values just leave them and uh, they um, they handle outliers you don't have to deal with outliers just leave them okay and uh, of course there are um, five and six and seven but these are some of the methods uh, no we could uh, that methods we could replace the missing um, missing value with na uh, zero with constant value number six and Can we completely uh, remove the null values uh, which are missing so now if you have for example a, a question mark in there you could replace it with a zero uh, you could replace it in any or you could replace it in unknown like the way I did here in categorical so these are some of the uh, methods uh, that we could use you know let's take a look uh, list and you know you could um, delete the columns and the rows if simply uh, they are minimum they are not too many and they don't have any impact whatsoever on uh, your analysis you could impute them with the constant like median mean or median uh, we could uh, impute them with a distribution uh, we could uh, impute missing values from the model you know building using a model to uh, determine the value of a missing values uh, we could uh, if you are using the uh, if you have uh, uh, categorical data you could uh, simply transform your categorical data to dummy variables dummy uh, is simply zeros and ones you could uh, impute uh, uh, yeah you could apply them um, you know we could replace them by an uh, missing values m or uh, a constant and yeah that's that's that is some of the uh, techniques that you could use to handle your missing values unfortunately as far as i know uh, there is no single method to determine the missing values uh, the other missing values if any unless the missing values here is an empty set so you have to number one uh, apply some statistical analysis to your data to make sure that your the values do make sense statistically and look for other type of missing values look for other type of missing values and uh, once you determine the missing values if any then determine the method the optimal method that you uh, need to use to uh, eliminate or um, to fix the issue so let's say that let's say that you uh, decided to remove uh, your missing values oh my god here we go so you decide to move to remove your missing values and you went all the way um, to your analytics and you created the model you built a model and the performance of the model is not up to at your expectation what do you think you should do or uh, you imputed the missing values or you predict the missing values uh, using machine learning and the performance is not uh, is not that high what do you think you should do i think we will iterate with another method of dealing with the missing value yes that is true so at the interview at the interview and it happened to me several times you know they would ask you if you have a missing values what do you, what what you should do so 
if you tell them dropping is the right answer, it's, it's an answer, it's a correct answer, but it's not the right answer. Most of the uh, questions that you will get at the interview time, uh, they require options. So you need to come up with scenarios. If they ask you about missing values, you could tell them, okay, so to handle missing values, we could do a drop in either of the column, of the rows, depends on this and this and this. Or we could do amputation. If it's numeric, we could replace the missing values by uh, with the median, with the mode, so with the median, with the mean, with the distribution. If it's categorical, we could replace the categorical with the mode if the category, the missing value is, uh, is minimum. Otherwise, we simply uh, replace the missing values with unknown or constant. Or we could uh, simply uh, predict the, the value of missing values using machine learning. And most likely we'll be using the k-nearest neighbor. Or we could leave all our missing values and try uh, some non-algebraic, non-probabilistic model. And you could give a name. You could give us an example. Decision tree, uh, random forest, and any uh, model that uses decision tree as the base learner. So if you tell them um, drop, Yes, it's a correct answer, but it's not the right answer. It depends on scenario. Okay, so uh, go back to the code. So we are looking here. At, yeah, we're looking for uh, missing values. There is no missing values in there. They have to add more codes because I really don't know what happened. Probably yeah, I must have deleted some um, some cells by accident. But uh, yeah, any question concerns about the regardless of uh, what uh, method you are using, uh, you are simply trying to get an ap approximation. You might not probably get the right value, but it's better to approximate it rather than having uh, a zero in there. Sure. Thank you. So, Mo, I have a question. I, okay. Maybe I missed it. Um, so, this applies to both categorical and no, the no. numerical? No, only the category, the numerical. Only the categorical. No, okay. no, no. Only the numerical, numerics. Then, how would you say NA or anything else in the numerical one? So, uh, would... so uh, for, for the categorical, uh, yeah, you could use it. You could replace it, you know, you could replace it with, um, you know, if there is a zero in there, uh, you could replace it with um, a value and transform the entire data into a numeric one more time. But it's a lot more work. It's more work. But if it's a numerical, you cannot put an A there. You need to have a number. Put an A there. You could put an A there, but there is a lot of work to transform it back into a numeric. Okay. So, so you have to do that eventually. Best, uh, the best option is uh, to uh, replace the categorical with uh, categorical data with NA, with U, or uh, unknown, or with NA. And uh, for, uh, for numeric, uh, simply handle them with the mean mode uh, or standard deviation, if you were to keep them. Other than that, you know, um, and uh, you could use uh, machine learning, you could use uh, dummy variables, you could use so many methods. Also, one of the problem that uh, you will uh, have to handle is uh, the outliers. The outliers, they are very, uh, uh, you know, quality-wise, they are very bad. Now, they could uh, simply deviate the, your entire analysis from the reality. So what is an outlier? An outlier is simply an element that lives uh, beyond the uh, majority of your data. So let's say that uh, we have a variable called age. And we have the count here. And so we were to uh, display or to plot the age variable um, into the to dimension to, in, into the space. 
so we got something like this in here so we got a lot of uh, scattering and scattered across the dimension space and you have one animal here that lives a uh, so uh, by definition an outlier is any uh, value that lives at least um, two standard deviation from the mean so distance wise so this is distance is to send the deviation from the, the mean so the mean should be somewhere here so that is an outlier and the outlier it could be uh, uh, when we are talking about the outliers uh, it could be uh, Uh, it could be a real value for example um, uh, if you were to predict um, a salary of someone and you got them um, uh, you know you are working for HR trying to predict a salary of a data scientist the, you, you, that you are about to hire and uh, in your data, you got a salary from 26,000 employees, um, past and present, uh, of the, your organization. And the range is uh, between 70,000, you know, the less payment, the less salary, 70,000, the max is 350. You got one person in there who's making um, 1.2 million. That is possible. So this is your 1.2 million. So it could be a real value. It could be a, a typo. A typo, someone was typing a, a moment one age is instead of putting a 90, a 19, he put a 91. So when we, uh, uh, when we plot the age into the into space, you are going to see this is Mohammed Wani is a uh, ninety one. It could be uh, something that is not supposed to happen, but it happened. It's called anomalies. Anomalies, and it could be something else. So, what is anomalies? Uh, imagine that you design a, a cloud system that has to be accessed by uh, uh, Georgia um, employees uh, only. So we got a range of IP addresses. So we got uh, people here, uh, you know, accessing the, uh, the, the system across the, the state. All of a sudden in the morning, you find, um, let's say, Idris access the system from Nigeria. Okay, so when we plot this into the, the dimensions, you are going to see uh, um, uh, the, ma the majority of IP address, and you see a minority. That is that is an outlier, but what's causing this outlier here uh, is uh, unknown. And this is considered an anomaly. So an outlier is an anomaly. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so an anomaly is an outlier in terms that it lives beyond the majority, but uh, an outlier is not an anomaly. So in your opinion, uh, which type of uh, outlier uh, out, out, of, out of these three are very expensive dollar wise money wise which one is very expensive to fix uh, very expensive to handle and why so typo typo could okay. be the no i will call you and say change my my uh change gary then change my my age it's not expensive uh, real values real values yeah real values we are simply going to eliminate Say hey, we are not going to include the, the our CEO. Anomaly. So how Idris accessed our system from Nigeria? 
So now we need to fire someone. We need to redesign the entire system. We need to investigate. So there is a lot of effort, a lot of time, and a lot of uh, uh, money that we are going to invest here to determine what was the, the issue. So the anomaly, the, the uh, address access to our system was not supposed to happen. But it happened. Now we have to shut down the entire system for a couple of days to investigate, find out the problem, find out the root cause, fix it, and implement the system into the cloud. So the anomaly is very expensive. And how to handle outliers is again, it depends to enter two things. So if the outliers, if the outliers are the concentration, means you, 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 want to, you want to analyze the outliers, then you cannot, we are gonna, we are gonna keep them. So that we need to keep the outliers. We need to keep the address access to our system and try to analyze it. Even though it's one person, we try to analyze it. How address managed to access our system? You know, is there, if there is a bug in the codes? If there is an, a bleach, you know, what happened? That is something that we need. So the concentration is the outlier. If the, if the concentration is the majority, now you tell me how to handle the outliers. If the concentration is the majority. What do you think we should do with outliers? If the concentration is the majority and not the outliers. I'm sorry, what was the question? If the majority of the... If the concentration, if the study, if what you're trying to analyze is the majority, not the minority. I would eliminate it. Yes, drop them, majority. win again. Drop, drop outliers. Because, because we are trying to make it a uh, normal distribution, right? Which is closer to the line. E even if the majority of uh, the outlier, we, we can drop them basically to make it but more. When? Uh, when do you need to drop them? So let's assume that you got 50%, 50-50. Uh, 50 of them, they are outliers. 50, they are um, they are uh, normally distributed or they are not, they are, um, uh, you know, they are um, real or they are actual, they are uh, not outliers. What do you think? Do you still need to consider the drop in the 50%? No, no, then we need to keep them. Then so when we need do we find another drop? category? Yeah, when do we need to drop them? So when they are minorities, <laughs> when they are minorities. That's two, uh, you know. Oh, what, when they are not much. Yeah, when we don't have too many, mm -hmm. when they are not uh, important. Mo, uh, when would they be considered outliers if there was like 50% of the population was outliers? Wouldn't that just skew the data? Yeah, that is uh, other options we are going to consider. But right now we're talking about dropping. Yeah, that is another option. So what else? What else do you think we should do when we have an outliers? Okay, based on the on the uh, prior uh, discussion, I think you can also drop them if the, if they are not happening frequently. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, too many. If they are not too many, they are not important. They are not frequent. Yeah. Yes. Okay, fine. What else do you think we should do to handle the outliers? Someone just mentioned uh, a solution. We could do um, scaling. Uh, normalizing. Um, uh, yeah, scaling, normalizing, or uh, there is another terminology. You mean a normal distribution, which when they are not closer to the axis? Stand the rising. Yeah, we could do all of these type of methods here. To scale, you know, to bring to narrow down the gap between the minority and majority. You could do any of these types here. What else do you think you should do to handle outliers if the outliers are the uh, the concentration uh, are not the concentration? We could keep them. We could separate, 
let's say that if you are 50 50 we could separate the data into two uh sets two, two, two sets yes and of course use the models for set one model for set two and we are going to average or agree uh, average or vote apply voting okay what else that you think you should do uh, to handle outliers number four we could keep the outliers and what apply I, we mentioned that in the uh, missing values non-algebraic new category yeah. non-algebraic non-probabilistic um, models uh, like uh, decision tree random forest or any model that uses decision tree as its base learner oh do you mean replace outliers we don't replace outliers with what that's why i was trying to understand what do you, mean? you say keep the outliers keep but them. apply keep them. Tree. we are going to use a decision tree Decision tree does not care if your data has an outlier or you don't, don't have an outlier. Oh, I understand that. Thank you. Okay. So, and of course, it might be a number five, might be number six. So I recommend, uh, there are four books here. I do recommend for you guys. I think I talked about this in the past. Yeah, actually, actually. Yeah, there are four books. Three books here I recommend. Yeah, this is the fourth one. The first one is called uh, Yeah, future engineering. I have I have the uh, PDF I can share with you later. Data cleaning, and finally, uh, feature uh, engineering and selection. Okay, so uh, any question concerns about the, you know how to handle outliers or missing values. So um, tomorrow we are going to uh, implement uh, some of these techniques on how to handle missing values and outliers. So we are going to show you how to, uh, uh, you know, how to handle, uh, yeah, we are going to try to eliminate some features or some, um, some uh, attributes from our data and uh, we will learn how to impute using, uh, for missing values, how to impute using and um, uh, numeric using the uh, the um, distribution, the uh, mode, the, the mean, and the median, and for categorical, how to apply the mode and also how to apply the uh, replacement. Okay, folks, can that's you, it for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Until then, you get a great evening. Can we get the script more so we can play around? Yes, I will. Yes, you will get that. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Welcome, well, Islam. Stay safe. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Salam alaikum.